I just wanted to really quickly show you some of the uh, rendering options. I think I just blew past them really quickly in that first class when I showed you uh, Fusion 360. So I've, I'm just going to uh, point them out again. Remember, we're trying to get models. The goal, anyway, was to get models that had a white background so that when we put them all together on the poster, they look like individual things. But, you know, I think it's not really that strict. If you're trying to get that and you weren't able to, that's a different story. Then watch this video and, and try and get it to look the way you want. But if you really, really wanted a blue background or you um, or you wanted to get a detail as the image for the poster, just like we were talking about in some of the critiques, then that's fine too. So uh, I'm going to just click on render. And uh, so the main options are uh, to change the appearance. If you want to change the physical material, that's the only option that's not on the quick toolbar here. But that's different. We're really interested in just changing the appearance for this because um, we only care about the, the look um, and not necessarily that it actually is glass in the model, but that it looks like glass. So uh, if you go to appearance, you can see there are all these options. Maybe uh, you go to blue glass and you just drag it on there. I think everybody got this far. What you might not know is now this is showing as being a part of the design. Uh, you can click on it and edit, but any changes you make when you try and save them, it'll say you can't save them. So you have to duplicate it first, and then you can edit that duplicated one. So if I wanted this to be a nice, uh, disgusting orange glass, then I could uh, change the name, change the color, put in RGB values if I want. I can increase the roughness. Uh, there are other options that I think you should try, but uh, I, honestly, I don't know what all of them are. You can go into the material editor and uh, actually get down to um, these other features like bump patterns. So if you had an image, I think it's probably a grayscale image that looked like uh, light and dark um, areas. I think those are translated as actually bumps on the um, or a texture on, on the surface. You could try that out. I'm not sure what cutout is, but it looks like it's looking for a similar kind of image. Uh, and there are some other things that you could try out. So um, I think uh, I didn't change anything, so I can hit cancel. And now you can see there's a glass orange here, and I dragged that on, and now it's orange. <clears throat> there are other ones uh, in the Legacy Appearance Library, including LED, which I was pointing out before. Um, and there's a video posted on the Tumblr that shows how you could use the LED appearance to make something that looks like a light. Um, that's about it for appearance. Then we could go on to environment. <clears throat> Changing these are kind of like presets. So when I change to cool light, it changes to a gray background. I think that's how some people got a gray background. Um, you could choose cool light and then just change the background manually. So from environment, we'll take it from whatever this preset is. But if you choose custom color, you can change it to white. And now all of a sudden you have a white background. Um, it seems like maybe for what we're doing, sharp highlights could be the best. You can change the direction of the light or the shadow, but uh, you'll notice that if you change to something like cool light, you can rotate it, but um, it's a really long shadow no matter what. So we don't have a whole lot of control. That's why sharp highlights seem like one that keeps the shadow in a reasonable area. Um, again, it's up to you, but just consider how the shadow ends up in the image or it doesn't. Um, and try and use the shadow to show more information. This kind of tells what the profile looks like. If you have a really complicated model, you can actually have the shadow help articulate what's happening in the model instead of just being some burdensome thing that you have to worry about. It could be helpful. Um, there's ground shadow. Uh, that's whether there's a shadow or not. So you may just not want a shadow. But uh, ground reflection, it's, um, it appears in here. You know, this is, tr this is clear, so there's actually... Uh, you can kind of see the reflection in in here. Depending on the angle, um, you may be able to see it more or less, depending on the model. Uh, the more you add things like ground reflection and uh, I think probably roughness in the in the previous pane that we're looking at, all those things, those little details are probably going to make the rendering take longer. But um, that's just, I mean, that's just how it goes. That's why one model takes longer to render than another. Camera, if you have it on orthographic, things are going to look weird, as we talked about. It also makes the, the shadow orthographic, so that's strange. Um, but one interesting thing is if you choose depth of field, you can um, actually choose the place uh, on which the, in which the, the image is focused. And so if you have um, different focal lengths, you'll see that part of the uh, model that's further back will be blurred out. So you can start to make something look kind of realistic or at least look like a photograph um, that's shot with a wide angle lens or something. So 
uh, you can you can try that. I think camera should always be on perspective for what we're doing. And then the final thing is uh, we wouldn't worry about decals. You could do that in the modeling. I guess you could do it here, but I don't know why you would. And then um, ray tracing is where it actually uh, renders the model. You can see it's a lot different than the kind of mock-up of it. So you can see this, just to get one iteration is taking a really long time. I've got translucent material. I've got ground reflection. I've got shadows turned on, even though it's a really faint shadow here. And uh, I've also got reflections of the room and so on. So uh, one iteration took 20 seconds, whereas another one, it might be up to 10 by now, uh, especially if you have a faster computer or a faster graphics card uh, or more memory in your graphics card. Those things would probably affect it. So um, that's about it. You can see this looks like it might work out for the kind of thing we're doing. Um, maybe I think the way that this uh, reflection gets cut off isn't so great, so I could eliminate that. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. Uh, email me if you have any questions.